my name is Chris Norman. Welcome to another episode. And this one, we'll talk about how to winterize your hides in preparation for, well, obviously winter. And we'll talk about in this video, specifically in Idaho, or at least in the northern climates, um, please consult your local beekeepers in your area to really see what they utilize uh, for winterization. The best ones are actually gonna be commercial operations uh, where they spend thousands of hours optimizing the health of their colonies to make sure they can actually survive through the winter time. So if you're in uh, Texas or in Canada, the way you winterize and really even manage your bees will be different. So make sure to consult uh, your, your local beekeepers there. In this case, we will talk about Idaho or, or areas that do experience some type of winter, typically get in, gonna be in the teens. Um, or, or really below freezing. It'll be hitting for a number of number of days or weeks uh, during the winter time. And, and here in Idaho, we get maybe a, a few inches of snow. Again, it only stays for uh, a little bit. Some areas get uh, inches or foot, feet of snow. So again, consult your uh, local area. So for our area, we do recommend using a single brood management style. This is a single box Langstroth design. Uh, you can winterize in other styles. We'll be talking specifically about the Langstroth design. And some do a single box, some two boxes, some three boxes on mediums. There's a lot of different var variation here. The reason why we go to a single brood management style is just for heat efficiency. Uh, if I would take off this lid here and just kind of show you, and imagine uh, your house, for example, right? Uh, if you're if you're in the United States, Western culture, uh, imagine the house that's a, a heating unit, right? If you had a two-story house, you would need a much uh, more robust heating unit. So basically, you're basically using more energy to heat. So if I put a, a second box on this, the bees start in the bottom, and as they winterize, they eat. They you know as the winter goes on, they start eating upwards. Uh, which but that means though they start in the bottom and they have to heat both the top box and the bottom box. And as we know, heat rises. And so heat will go in here. If you have a, uh, basically this um, um, ventilation gap on top, you're basically heat escaping out the top. They have to even burn even more energy to literally heat from the top down. And so it is a very inefficient way of heating a beehive. And so in a single box, there is, they can just heat the one box and they're, and they're done. They don't need to really worry about heating multiple boxes and wasting that energy. And so that's why we recommend actually going to a single uh, brood management style, even in Canada and areas like that. They'll, they'll do a single box. Now they, they are indoors, uh, some do outdoors. Again, they wrap it, in this case we don't, but again, just for simplicity sakes, we do a single brood management style. See our website for more details. I'll make sure to leave a link um, in the description below if you wanna check out that article. So once you're ready to winterize, make sure that there's plenty of resources in here. If you can lift this up, it's very, very light. We suggest using a weighing system, but again, it, it has to be very heavy, right? There, make sure that there's plenty of resources. 89 per, 90% uh, of the hive is, is, has, has uh, food in it, specifically uh, honey, um, capped honey. Uh, make sure that you uh, have an introducer. That's going to be helpful a lot. So we we pretty much use these in introducers almost year round, and we use this uh, I guess this slender uh, side. This is approximately 15 square centimeters. Um, in, in our our term of measuring, it's basically three eighths of an inch up, and it's sort of between six and a half inches across. Now we actually do slightly different. Where's one second? All right, found it. <laughs> Uh, we use these ones, uh, and they're, you can tell that they're a little, little shorter. These are 13 square centimeters, um, so it's actually five and a half inches across and three eighths an inch up. So we use these all year round, including in the wintertime, um, as our introducer. So uh, that helps us to basically have the bees acclimate to their environment. We want them to adapt. We want the bees to adapt to their environment. The less human intervention, uh, in our case, at least for our research, the, the better. And so uh, in this case, if they want to reduce this entrance, can they? Yes, they can. They can add prop propolis here and reduce this entrance if they want. They can't, though, expand the entrance. They can't necessarily chew the wood uh, through, but they can add propolis to reduce the entrance. So if they want an entrance uh, as small as this, they can make one uh, according to their environment. But we see them not doing that they'll keep the same entrance all year round and they'll, they'll be just fine. So we have plenty of food. Make sure there's an entrance uh, reducer in the front. Make sure to prop something up. You wanna prop the hive up a little bit. And this is basically helps as the rain hits and some areas are much more rainier. Uh, you wanna make sure the rain is not, especially not going upwards. If, you're, if your hive is back tilted at all, you can get a leveling system and find out that water is gonna be rushing the back and causing a lot of moisture issues. Um, so that's why we like to prop 
put this up just to make sure that as the snow is melting or rain is hitting it, it's flowing out the front, not inside the hive. And so make sure that's uh, on the back. And you can actually do that year round, just have the, have the hive propped up. So we have a plenty of honey inside. What we like to do is take white granulated sugar and just kind of level the top here. Now, on, on if you do have these inner covers, um, most styles are about three eighths gap on the top here, a three three eighths inch gap. Uh, just just kind of level this with the granulated white sugar, and that will be basically two things. They'll be their food source, emergency food source, and actually will absorb moisture uh, coming from the, in, in the colony. We see that in, once the winter is done. That's a lot of times it's very, very hard if it's still there. Yeah, or we go go there and they're all out and we have to give them more. But anyways, it basically absorbs the moisture and gives them some emergency feed in case they didn't get the, the amount of food that they needed or got colder or, or events happened within the winter that we didn't expect. At that point, basically you're good to go. Uh, remember, you're propped up, introducer, plenty of food inside. Um, make sure, of course, the lid's on nice. There's emergency feed, white granulated sugar. Put the lid on and you're pretty much uh, good to go. Make sure the lid's all uh, nice and uh, on there. And then you're done for the winter. You don't have to wrap the hive, you don't do anything like that. Um, they're ready uh, and they're very efficient in this case in producing the heat they need to survive. Uh, really in this case, two things that will, will, will kill them, diseases, varroa, um, and also lack of food. In, tip, in a typical case, we actually find they die due to diseases um, or varroa before they actually get food. So in this case, if your bees are healthy though, then make sure that for sure they have food. So anyways, hope that was educational for you. We will leave a link in the description below if you want to do a check out another article regarding winterization specifically for the Idaho area there. So uh, appreciate the journey with us. Have a big evening.